Good morning and welcome to the Automation Morning Show for Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you had a great holiday season. I know I did. I came down with a little cold, but it's quickly uh, quickly going away. So uh, hopefully I won't sniffle too much during this morning's show. I really just want to wish you all a very happy 2024. Man, I can't believe. Where did 2023 go? I think it was January 2nd of 2023 where we did our first show so we're now entering in our second year of the automation morning show a show where we cover what's new and happening in industrial automation we do have some changes coming this year just streamline uh, getting the show out every morning we're still in our winter hours so we're doing tuesdays and thursdays and um we plan to do that right through until the beginning of spring just because we have so much going on so much other stuff going on here at the uh, Insights and in Automation, which is the automation blog and automation school. And uh, with that said, uh, if this is your first time watching, my name is Sean Tierney from Insights and in Automation. And uh, like I said, this is a show where we talk about what's new and happening. And uh, there were quite a few things that uh, happened since uh, the last show on the 21st. And uh, surprisingly, a lot of articles and uh, announcements and manuals came out. So we're going to take a look at those today as well as some other things. And uh, with that, let's uh, first uh, just go in right before I left on vacation. I just want to let you know that I did update and go back in. And there was like, a, I, I wanted to pull up the spreadsheet. There was over a thousand different stories we had covered that hadn't made it into the um, categories yet. They were uh, on pages of, you know, a whole month on one page. So I went in, I, I, I exported, I imported, I massaged the data in Excel and I was able to get it all in. The links don't auto redirect on those older links, but they're all in the system. And now you can see exactly how many uh, articles we covered last year. 679 articles we covered last year, 80 application profiles, um, overall 3,200 different news stories we covered, right? And uh, 62 downloads, 573 new automation manuals, um, all kinds of different things. And uh, all the companies are now listed. There may be some dupes. I tried to eliminate all the duplicates, but uh, there may be some dupes. Sometimes the spelling, you know, I'll enter it two different ways because, you know, I make a typo. And so in any case, uh, I try to eliminate them all, but as I find them, I'll take them out. But in any case, you can see here some of the, you know, we had 28 articles uh, or content pieces from Cognix last year, 16 on uh, CodeSys. Um, you can see here on Emerson, 142. Endress Hauser 11. Let's get down to the, I'm just going to scroll down to the R so we can see Rockwell. Uh, let's see here. Rockwell 308 and Schneider 110. Siemens 426. Siemens has a big company. They have lots of websites, so we do cover a lot from them. There's also, I'm still, there's some of these vendors, it's hard to find what their latest, like halfway through the year, we stopped getting updates on Siemens documents. So, because they changed their website. So I have to go in and massage some of those links for this year to make sure we're seeing everything that's new. Not every website's designed the same and not everyone's as easy to navigate. So, but I did want to let you know that these counts are now uh, updated. Of course, we try to cover the automation blog in school uh, on each show because that's that's our company. And, um, but in any case, I wanted to let you know that, that, that those counts are now accurate. And if you click on them, you'll see all the stories we covered. For instance, like if I just come over here and chose like Intera, we'll see everything we covered from Antera last year. Okay, and like I said, some of the auto links don't automatically redirect. You'll have to um, click on the, H, the, um, the HTT, HTTP link, the hyperlink. So with that said, let's uh, go ahead and get started today. We'll first uh, thank our sponsor here, which is the Automation School. Let me go back to full screen. You can see I got all kinds of stuff on the workbench today. And that is because um, I have to test it all. I have to test everything that we're adding just fill in all the little, um, you know, parts and pieces. I want to cover as much as the hardware as we can getting in. And so, you know, little things like um, some of the, you know, 1762 I.O. modules I hadn't covered yet. Uh, you know, station connectors for the PLC5 Data Highway Plus Remote I.O. stuff. Um, some slick modules I didn't have. Um, some compact I.O. modules. You know, testing out the 32-point cards means wiring up 32 points. And so, um, you know, it's time consuming, right? Flex Logics, uh, DeviceNet, I finally picked up a PDN, found one inexpensively. And, um, you know, just all kinds of stuff, extra device net, extra control net, because I want to make sure we have plenty of that on the networks. So and when we actually set up and do those networks, that they'll be 
that there'll be um, there'll be you know robust. There'll be lots of stuff on it. Even looking at some compact I/O uh, this morning to put on the um, to 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 order to get in here. So um, and even maybe do device net with the 800. I'm not sure about that yet, but something we're looking at. Um, but in any case, so really busy here, and that's going to be one of the reasons for some of the changes in the show. I got to streamline how we produce the show so that. Um, so that um, uh, we can uh, we can uh, work on the courses, work on the shows, and bring you even more shows. So with that, let me go back to, and I want to say hi to the folks in the chat. The chat is up. And so let me go back to uh, the screen here, and we'll go over to our first story of today. And I know I started a little late. I'm sorry for you guys who like to catch the show live in the morning um, between um, yesterday being a holiday. I still worked out here all day yesterday, but... Um, just didn't get everything done last night that I wanted to. But uh, in any case, our first story here is from uh, obviously MDT. And uh, they've added, I'll, I'll summarize this, they've added um, WinCC Unified Comparison Reports now to their product, ver um, not version dog, Octoplant. Okay, now we recently had them on the show to show us how to use Octoplant. I was really impressed with the software. And uh, now you can actually do comparison port reports with the latest and greatest WinCC, WinCC Unified. So that's very interesting. And congratulations to obviously MDT for, uh, for making that happen. That's great. Um, from there, we go over to inductive automation. This is like a press release. It's talking about what they're doing on social media. Now, last year, we talked about this early last year. Uh, they had this hashtag talk that was, uh, what the heck, what the heck is ignition? Excuse me. <coughs> What the heck is Ignition? It was a hashtag, and it was really to ask people what they thought Ignition was. Like to them, was it just a skater or an HMI, or was it something more? And they really talk about that, and they talked about a lot of the great responses they got from that. And uh, really looking back at 2023 and, and how it was for them, they quoted a lot of people too. And um, now for 2024, they're starting a new hashtag, and this is the ignition effect let me see if i can find it here um let's see Ooh, that's maybe a little too big and so um they're really focusing on linkedin facebook twitter or instagram and i believe it is ignition effect let's see here the ignition effect so that's the new hashtag i'm not seeing the hashtag there but i i know it's in there i read it this morning so uh if you are in an ignition user check out this uh this article i think you'll find it very interesting from there, we go over to an article from Grace Technologies about um, have, has your electrical safety program been naughty or nice this year? And it talks a lot about um, lockout, tagout. It talks a lot about OSHA and how they're finding more and more year over year, more and more lockout, tagout uh, violations. And so, you know, this may be a good thing to focus on if you need something to focus on in your safety program. Um, this may be it, right? So uh, take a look at that. They OSHA's hired a lot more people to go out there and do inspections. Um, I believe they do free consultations, which is uh, uh, fine free. So you can double check me on that. But if you're in the U.S. and you think you have issues, you look into that because they they may come in on a for free on a consultory basis and not you won't have to pay any fines if they if they find anything. Of course, you will have to fix them. But in any case, um, this is all just for you know our safety. And uh, making sure that when we're in our panels, that the power is, or working on any equipment that's electrified, that it's um, it's de-energized when it needs to be. So uh, really interesting. Of course, they have Grace has all kinds of products for uh, you know lockout, tagout. We've talked about the PS, PESDs before many times. And uh, I did like this one quote though. I'll leave you with this on this article. It says, "For every one dollar invested in safety and health." Companies expect a return of 4 to $6. So, good investment, right? From there, we go over to Aviva. In this article, Connecting the World, Aviva's Blueprint for Industrial Transformation. It's an article that kind of summarizes their big, uh, their big show, their big event that they had all their users and resellers at. And um, I thought it was interesting. They're focusing a lot on data analytics. They're focusing a lot on, um, you know, intelligence as a service. So, you know, using those analytics and selling that as a, instead of having a server on your site, maybe connecting it to the cloud and letting the anal analytics run in the cloud. A lot of people don't realize this, but when you talk to Siri or Alexa or Google Home, 
they actually take your voice and send it up to the cloud. Instead of trying to do, and this change, I don't know, 20 years ago, you know, um, the change went from trying to do all the processing on the device to actually just recording your voice and sending it to the cloud and letting their supercomputers uh, actually process that. So that's big, and, and you know, they talk about the new Pi data infrastructure. If you don't know, uh, they purchased OSI Pi, I think it was $2 billion um, a couple of years ago. They talk about uh, software as a uh, service, they talk about MES, and you know, so if you're an Aviva user, you'll probably find this very interesting. It's really a summary of what their, what their blueprint is for, um, for the next year or their product blueprint. And um, yeah, and Frank, uh, hey, Happy New Year, Frank. Frank's also in the chat with, uh, uh, and sorry, I can't pronounce everybody's names, I apologize, but I do want to say hi to everybody in the chat. And um, he says, make sure you have an extra pair of glasses because 12 volt AC and 12 volt DC, that could be disastrous if you didn't wire them up uh, correctly. So with that, very good point. We go over to Premio, they're an industrial computer manufacturer, and uh, but they had a great article about um, IP67, 68, and 69K. So if you haven't looked at these standards in a while, definitely recommend those. And um, you know, if you have anybody junior in your staff who may not be up to speed on them, uh, definitely a good primer article to, to get you updated or refreshed on what the differences are. And I thought they did a good job on that. Of course, that relates to industrial computers, especially, you know, panel mount where they're going to be, you know, exposed to the environment. Um, from there, we go over to Omron. And I had to check to make sure this wasn't recycled, um, but I could not find that we covered this before. So this is an article about Getting started with AMRs, autonomous mobile robots. It's a beginner's guide. And as I was reading through this, this is really like, if you think you're gonna deploy some AMRs for the first time, I really think it's a good general introduction of things to consider before you actually place your order or even contact an AMR vendor. I thought they did a very good job talking about, you know, pitfalls, considerations. Of course, you always have to have somebody involved who knows the process, like, where, where you're going to use it, they, you're going to have somebody who really knows that inside and out, right? Just having a manager who has some key goals, that's good. But if you don't have the guy who actually knows how things work on the plant floor, it ain't going to, it ain't going to work out. So in any case, I enjoyed that article there from Umran. And then uh, today we're just featuring our featured product this week or today is um, our ultimate courses. And that's why I have all this hardware here. So um, we got to get through testing all of this. Um, got most of that tested over there. Still got these things to test, and then we'll start filming the brand new uh, hardware lessons. These are our forever courses, so um, these courses, I don't ever expect to not be updating these. Uh, this is, this is going to be a weekly thing for me to update these every week. And uh, we get some new HMI courses coming. I'm excited about that. We make the transition to HMIs on uh, March 1st. So uh, we get some brand new HMI products we'll be uh, uh, teaching on too. Um, so really, really excited about that. But uh, for now, uh, today we're just featuring our ultimate courses. Right now you get these free when you buy the existing extended or level one and two course. So um, there's no extra charge. You get the existing course today and then you get the forever ultimate courses in the future. Now we call it ultimate, excuse me, <clears throat> because eventually these will be level one, two and three. So um, after we finish all the level one content, we'll break out the, uh, the level one course as a standalone course. And, but, but if you get the ultimate course, you'll have all the future updates, no charge. So uh, in any case, it's something we want to do. We've done this, actually the automation school is 10 years old today, since our very first course, even our Kickstarter backers, whenever we do something new with that first course we've ever done, um, we've given them free upgrades. And that's something we believe in. We want to, you know, if you make an investment in the automation school, and this goes for group enrollment too. If you enrolled, I don't know, 10 of your staff back in, let's say 10 years ago, in one of our course, online courses, they get all the updates too. So it's not just for personal users, even the group enrollment users who get the bigger discount, they get it too. And if we partner with a vendor and they give you a free code to get into the course, you get all the updates too. So we want to take care of every one of our students. We support them. Uh, we've had several people come back eight years later and say, hey, I'm working on this again for the first time and I'm not getting this lesson and we're there for them. And that's the goal. This isn't about, um, th this is all about training people and getting them up to speed so they can do a great job out there. And look at all the great products uh, manufacturers make for us. I mean, it's so exciting, all the new products that are coming out every year, right? 
So with that, we go over to a software toolbox and they had a, a good article. If you're using their OPC router, this is a really good article about how to use it to export data, the massage and export data to like text files or to JSON files. Maybe you'll send that via MQTT to some destination. So I really thought they did a good job explaining it. I don't have the software, but um, just reading through this article this morning, I thought it was very easy to understand and the software looks very intuitive. So um, in any case, if you're using that, check that out. And from there, we go over to an article from uh, the ISA. This is from their website, automation.com. And this talks about how to reduce cloud security vulnerabilities in smart manufacturing. And as we saw with the Aviva story, um, this can be a, this can be a problem. A lot of people are connecting to the cloud. I mean, a lot of us have done this in our homes, um, and we 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 hope that our uh, internet service provider is protecting us, right, with the router they send us. But um, in your plant, you can't you know you can't assume that uh, your internet service provider is going to protect your mil millions and millions of dollars worth of production, you know, every year. So, um, you know, what are the things you need to do to protect yourself when you're connecting to the, these third party vendors? And granted, it's in their interest too. all the big players. It's in their interest not to get, let you get hacked. But there are things you got to do. We've talked about this a lot last year, zero trust and other things. This article also talks about some different avenues to, to look at when you're uh, discussing this. And um, some of the best practices they have here, I won't read the whole article, but some of their best practices in this article include Conduct regular security audits. Invest in employee training, very important, because employees a lot of times don't know that they're the vector for these, um, for these attacks. Um, choose cloud providers with robust security measures. So you should always ask all your cloud providers what they're doing, what level of security they have, and so on. Uh, implement strong access controls. We talk about you know, using key cards and other things to avoid you know, the, the shared password issue and um, developing a comprehensive incident response plan. And all, uh, as always, and I talk about this all the time, regularly back up your data. And that includes your PLC programs and your HMIs and your SCADAs. And that's why we talk about uh, products like uh, obviously MDTs, Octoplan and Copia automation and whatnot, because um, if you're not backing it up, there's a good chance that machine may never run again if you don't have a copy of the program. So very sad to see that, but I've seen it many times over the last 33, 34 years. So from there, we go over to an article from Antira, and this talks about how industrial Ethernet switches can also help securing your plants. And as we saw last year with Red Lion and the RA, I think it was the RA-10C and the zones and conduits, this article talks about a different aspect of what you can do with industrial switches. And this article talks about Mac filtering, right? Only allowing, so if you're not familiar with uh, Ethernet, you know, you've probably heard of Ethernet IP address. So you have an, or an Ethernet address. So you have an Ethernet address, a subnet mask, right? Um, but each device, while that's an assigned value, either through software or through a server, um, each physical device has a physical uh, address, a Mac address, right? That's assigned. So if you buy 10 network cards, well, this is a glitch in the factory, which happens sometimes. Sometimes um, Each of those 10 network cards will have a unique Mac address, a hardware address. And um, one of the things you can do in industrial switches is you can filter those and only allow the, uh, the computers you trust to connect to other, or the devices you trust that connect to other devices. So interesting take on security, definitely one to do. Now, part of that is you need to get an alert if a, if a, a new a MAC address shows up on the network. And the reason is because sometimes people will replace, like let's say you're in a field, you replace your EMBT card with maybe an EN2T card and then nothing's working. Well, somebody has to go into the switch and, and now whitelist that new address. But but that's important, right? Because if you have a new employee, do you have to give them a new password or do you just, just let them log in as the, the old guy? Here, you log in as John with his password. <laughs> Who does that? <coughs> Excuse me. So in any case, um, yeah, so these are some of the things we have to do to keep our plants secure. From there we go over to, not again, oh, so we'll skip that. Um, some websites, from the time I pull it up in the morning to the time I start the show, they change the URL and I can't, I can't show you what I was going to show you. In any case, let's go to events. So here we have a new event coming up, and, and this is on uh, temperature transmitters in the chemical industry. 
And um, if you work in the chemical industry, I know it's a, a subgenre where there's a lot of a lot of uh, automation or a subsector vertical where there's a lot of automation, chemical industry, uh, uh, oil and gas and whatnot. Um, they, um, Endress Hauser is having uh, a seminar talking about temperature transmitters. So that is on January 17th at 2 p.m. Now this is EDT. I'm assuming it's not daylight savings time. It's, so that might be a typo. Um, in any case, uh, I do want to just uh, mention while I'm here, the uh, guides over at the automationblog.com. Um, these guides, you just go to auto, the automationblog.com and you'll see guides here. I think there's 16 of them. And these are just ordered lists of all the content. We have over 1,700 articles and videos, probably more than that now, uh, up there at the automationblog.com. And last year I went up and organized the top 16 topics. Um, I think I had a limit of, it had to be like a, a dozen or more articles. Um, to be in a guide and i ordered all the articles from you know getting started to you know more advanced topics like pids and whatnot so if you're looking for a specific subject like siemens plc's or allen bradley plc's or hmi's you'll find that up there from there we go to downloads and a couple of new ones from siemens we got uh, mean time between failures uh, for cymatic products that's been updated and then we also have uh, cinematics v70 firmware update as well as the Cymatic Energy Suite V19 trial download and updates for Sirius Soft Starter ES V19. Uh, oh, as far as manuals over at the Siemens site, we had a new manual on the G130-150. I believe that is a servo drive or a VFD. Um, from there, we go over to Rockwell. They have a new brochure on uh, their uh, plant packs with Factory Talk Batch. This is for consumer good products, uh, and, you know, doing batching, a lot of liquid batching. From there we go over, there was a ton of new Micro 800. This is great because we're filming a new course on it, but a ton of new Micro 800 plug-in uh, module manuals, wiring diagrams. So I'm just going to feature the OF2 and the IF2. Um, there's a lot more. There's probably seven or eight of them, but uh, everyone I show you, I add to automate that news. So I didn't, I, I'm not going to show you every single one just because it, makes more work for me. So if you're interested in Micro 800 um, plug-in modules, there's a lot of new wiring diagrams at AB's website. There's also uh, a new tech data on the Flex 5000 uh, module specifications. This typically has all the information you need about the modules. We actually had them on the podcast, very interesting podcast. We went pretty deep into the product in that podcast. So if you're looking at Flex 5000, check out the, the episode of the automation podcast on that. Um, and here's the uh, document on the cables. And then uh, switching over to Schneider, we get some great content coming from Schneider this year. Um, got them, got them uh, on the podcast for VFDs and for, oh, I forget what the next one is. Um, I think it's maybe HMI or SCADA. But in any case, we already had them on for their Harmony uh, panels and industrial PCs and HMIs, and they have a new catalog out on that. They also have a new catalog out on their TSYS motor starters. Um, smart, intelligent motor starters. We did have them on the podcast talking about that last year. Very interesting stuff. Um, and also a new catalog on the EcoStructure Secure Connect. So secure remote access solution. Um, over on the, uh, I think this is the Umron site. Yes, Umron. Um, they had two new manuals on their LVS95 um, barcode verifiers. So they had the data sheet and then they had the enhanced identification verification uh, a data sheet as well. And from there, in our other science and technology section, I wanted to feature two articles from IEEE Spectrum. One was uh, their top 10 AI articles of 2023. And I went through that. We did cover quite a few of these. Some of these I wasn't too interested in, but if you're following AI and, you know, machine learning like I am, you know, there's a lot of hype in there. We have to, you know, parse through a lot of that hype to get down to the you know, these new algorithms that are doing, uh, you know, really making things simpler and easier, like machine learning, like uh, auto, you know, self-teaching devices and cameras and photo eyes and whatnot. Um, so they, they're covering the top 10. And uh, I thought it was interesting. The other one I thought was interesting, too, and we talked about this quite a bit last year in the science and technology section, was humanoid robots. You know, we, you know previously to 2023, I would have thought this was a pipe dream or something that was far off into the future. But these things are actually out there, right? So we've seen 
A couple of them actually we've seen um, in prototype applications. Uh, the ones that I remember the most were the Digit from Agility Robotics. Um, very, very interesting uh, look there with the green body, the reverse uh, legs and the, uh, that head there with the two big eyes. And then the Apollo from Aptronic. This looks more like a humanoid. Um, and it has that distinct face with, uh, with uh, no nose or mouth. But um, in any case, it uh, looks like he has some beefy thighs, though. So very interesting. And there's others in this article. But um, we'll be watching that again this year because I do think we are getting close to where we'll start seeing these things, especially working in places where, um, you know, it's just uh, it's awkward to get a forklift into. It's difficult for one person to lift the weight. It's maybe hazardous or a dangerous area. And so, um, you know, these, these are very expensive investments, but um, the fact that, um, that um, they're available and they're on the market now is pretty interesting to me, at least anyways. All right, from there, we want to thank our sponsor, theautomationschool.com. We also want to let you know if you think I missed some news. Last show was on the 21st. If you think I missed any news, please fill in our news tip form, or you can always just get in touch with me using the talkback form. This is the feedback form. Um, from there, uh, we did have, uh, I think over a dozen people sign up and join our community over at automation.locals.com. And, um, I can't wait though. We, we did have, uh, uh, some, uh, last week we had did all the polls, the audience survey. So I can't wait to see how those, uh, came out on Saturday. Siemens was nudging out Rockwell who was nudging out Beckoff. So it'd be interesting to see. I did have to remove uh, the one IP address had voted for one company I've never heard of a bazillion times. So I did have to back that out. So I may have to do that again. So the results aren't final yet. But you can see all the results over at theautomationblog.com from our 2023 audience survey. And uh, if you want to uh, follow me or if you want to uh, join our community, you can do so over at automation.locals.com. Uh, from there, do want to thank everybody who picked up a copy of our eBooks in video collections last year. Really appreciate you all. I try to keep track of every order to make sure, um, especially the physical ones I delivered. And uh, if, if um, just want to thank you guys, as well as anybody who's picked up our coffee cups and t-shirts, definitely want to do more with this stuff. I have some great ideas, but um, um, you know, it, it comes down to time, but uh, looking forward to refreshing this line in 2024. And with that, I did uh, also wanted to, well, before I get to that, first of all, um, if you're new to the show, every single link from all this, I think this is 156, okay? So all 156 episodes are at the at automate.news, no www, no .com, automate.news. They're all now filterable in this list, all 3,231. Now, of course, today's links will get up later today after I, um, I uh, get the show to all the other platforms. And that's something I wanted to talk about. So... Um, will be streamlining how I put the shows out. So for the video services, because video is so time intensive, um, we're going to try, start to streamline that and um, we're not going to be um, republishing it, re-uploading it. You wouldn't imagine how long it takes to render the video, even a 20, 30 minute video, and then re-upload it to the services. So we'll be making some changes on that. So going forth, you will probably just, ha you'll have to scroll ahead to get to the beginning of the show not today. Today we're going to do the classic way. But going forward, as you, you know, if you're watching after the fact, you'll probably have to scroll, scroll ahead to when the show starts because uh, we won't be editing or re-uploading that. We still will be doing that for audio so we can send it out all to all the podcast locations. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, some other things too. Oh, I did want to congratulate the automationblog.com. You know, last year we finished our 10-year anniversary. And uh, we had our best year ever. I, we had, I think, I didn't look at the numbers this morning, but as before I went on vacation, we had had over 380,000 unique visitors to the site. That's a lot for, um, for our site. That's, um, I think, 20,000 new people found our site last year, which is great. And, um, you know, we have those 1,700 free articles and videos up there. So, um, you know, lots to read up there. This week... I'm hoping to have this ready for tomorrow's podcast. I don't know if it'll happen, but um, I like to go through every year and say, hey, what were the top 10 articles? What were the top 10 podcasts? What were the top 10 how-to videos? And so I look forward to putting that together this week. Don't know if I'll have it ready for, for tomorrow's podcast because we're a day short this week, right? And uh, we have all this equipment to test and, and get ready for the, the school. So in any case, but very excited about that, hitting that new milestone. Thank you all 
for visiting the blog last year. Of course, you can always watch a commercial free versions of the shows over there at the, um, at the automation blog. And um, I think that's it. So let me just check the chat. And um, yes, uh, Frank says robots are catch 22. I agree. Um, and a lot of times, you know, they're expensive too. So you really want to get the, the you, you really want to get the application correct. And uh, those, those vendors will help you with that. But in any case, um, I know I'm forgetting to tell you, there's a lot of other stuff I want to tell you, but um, I'm just going to leave the show right here. I'm going to wish you all a, uh, a, again, happy 2024. It's going to be, I, I know people are saying it's going to be a great year, or maybe it's not going to be a great year. It's going to be a roller coaster like every year, you know? The one thing we can expect is the unexpected. But the one thing we can do is stay courageous and stay fearless no matter what happens. And uh, with that, I just wish you all an awesome day. And until next time, peace.